It's that time of year again. Spartan race season. What does that mean? It's time to prepare for your races. You've got your training preparation, your meal preparation, but you also know that you need to get gear. What I wanna share with you is my personal gear list. The reason you should watch this video is because I have nothing to gain from the list I'm gonna provide you. Whereas a lot of the information that you're looking at now it's probably backed by sponsorships from different companies trying to sell their gear to you. There, there is so much bad information about gear. Me, I just wanted to compete. I wanted to place in the top three, and I did it. So I'm just trying to say you can trust old Dusty and his advice because he's going to steer you right on the course. My opinion for what gear you need is slowly determined by my desire to become faster and a better competitor. And I wanna share what I learned and discovered with you. So the gear list I'm gonna cover is your shoes, your socks, shorts, upperwear, gloves, hats. Um, all right, ready? Number one, shoes. This is why shoes are important. The heart of an OCR race is running. And you want a shoe that's comfortable. One of the main concerns that I had, and I think that you probably have too, is you're trying to find a shoe that's not gonna retain a lot of water. And Reebok also knows this, and I think a few other shoe companies do. So they've designed these shoes, OCR, Spartan shoes, and they advertise that the shoes have valves that are gonna push out water and keep your foot dry and help you run quickly. Well, here's the truth. Your shoes are gonna get wet, they're gonna get muddy, and they're gonna get heavy. That's just a simple fact. You wanna find a shoe that's gonna work for your foot and for your race. There is a difference between the races. The same shoe that I'm gonna wear in a sprint is not the same shoe that I'm gonna wear in a beast. The shoe is gonna retain some water, but I wanna minimize that. So I want like a shoe that's synthetic, no cotton, no materials that are gonna absorb water. I want to know that it is gonna have some ability to push out at least part of the water. Two, laces. You don't really think about it, but like I want shoes that don't have actual laces you have to tie. There are many different mechanisms for lacing and tightening the shoes. Um, and then like, for example, the pair that I got, you just tighten, hitch, you tighten, cinch, pull down like the little fastener and stick it up into the toe of the, the shoe and you're good for the race. You just set it, forget it. And three, grip. And that's like the most important, right? Your average street running shoe isn't gonna work as effectively as like a trail running shoe that has grip designed for muddy terrain. You don't have to get this specific pair or share like these. What I like about these is one, they're light. And like I said, the grip. I can climb out of any kind of mud pit with these. The trade-off is they're not very comfortable at longer distances. Compression, socks, are a 100% must. Like of the whole gear list, this is the one I will guarantee you that you're gonna want. The kind that I really liked was like the Tommy Copper ones, but you don't have to go with those. You can go with whatever kind you want. There's, with that said, um, why do you want compression socks? Mostly they're gonna protect your legs from the obstacles. Um, there's a lot of obstacles that you're gonna have to climb up ropes that you're gonna like be dragging your feet, dragging your legs across ropes. And two, they provide like a little extra stability to pre prevent any injuries that you sustain running over the uneven terrain that we find ourselves running on in these races. Shorts. I started off wearing compression shorts. The reason I like the compression shorts are they tight on your body. They're not going to snag on a lot of things. They're going to help you get over the obstacles better. The caveat to using Compression shorts is that if you're gonna wear them, I would strongly suggest you train in them too. They there's there's a definite difference in your stride when you train without compression shorts and then you throw them on during a race. It's notable. So I ended up just transitioning to short, um, quick dry running shorts. The higher the better, I say, is because once they get wet, they're gonna cause some resistance running. Um, the less material, the quicker it's going to dry. Yeah, my overall philosophy for shorts and pants, and you're running a race. It's a running race. Forget the obstacles. Like, the bulk of your experience is going to be in running. 
the key to winning is going to be training on your running. The key to getting better is going to be training on your running. So when I run, I want to be as less restricted as possible. Gloves. So this is probably where I spent most of my time searching for the right pair of gloves versus finding the, these gloves that are promising you perfect grip. So there's two reasons why you'd want gloves. Obviously, the more traditional use is just to keep your hands warm. And the second use is grip. And like, here's what it came down to. When the gloves get wet, when the gloves get muddy, they are going to lose grip. And in those scenarios, you're going to be better off with just your bare mitts. I personally don't get gloves for grip use. There is a warning. I guess there's a third reason. Um, I don't really worry about it because of my human, superhuman nature. But I guess you could get your hands injured, um, rope burned, blisters torn. I do find it's very unlikely that will actually happen during the race. And if it does, you're not going to notice it until the race is over. So I will wear gloves when it's cold, but those gloves are strictly to keep my hands warm because I was in a race where it got so cold, I couldn't, um, I couldn't feel my hands to tell if I ever had a firm grip on things. Like I could grip things, but I just couldn't feel like any strength or dexterity within them. So after that point, I did start wearing gloves um, only to keep them warm. And once I got to obstacles, I would discard them. Fair warning, you can't actually discard your gloves. I would just tuck them into my shorts. So that big bulge that uh, everybody saw was just my gloves. Sorry. However, I was always like fearful of the cold and I just came across um, something really cool on Amazon that I think I would actually try. And it's a neoprene vest. So it's kind of designed to keep you warm once you get wet, uh, like a wetsuit. And two, um, in the colder climates or the colder races or the colder time of year, if you can keep your chest warm, it's going to keep everything else warm, even more so than wearing a pair of gloves and specifically your hands, right? So if you can keep your body warm, so if you can keep your chest warm, you're going to have improved dexterity and grip strength. Then there's acceler accelerate auxiliary equipment a lot of people have watches uh, to time their mile time and like to pace themselves i personally don't uh, agree with that when i'm in the when i'm in the race i just want to be in the race and i feel if i looked at a watch and saw either how fast i was going or how slow i was going it would be too much of a mind f for me to to deal with time is relative man time is relative um, I definitely don't like wearing shirts. I, I just don't like them because once they're wet and then you're just going to have this cold, wet layer attached to your body while you're running. Uh, the races I went in are in the colder part of the year. So I predominantly was worried about staying warm. So for me, when you're running, um, the less clothes, the better, because in my mind, you're going to warm up quicker and you're gonna get wet, you can't avoid that. When I hit in that freezing cold, muddy water to come out of it bare skin because my body, my body is gonna produce enough heat to evaporate it quickly. If, if you do feel like you want to wear a shirt for whatever reason, and I do like to go for like either a rash guard type material or like the dry fit material, just for example, Nike has a brand of quick dry something clothes that claim to keep you warm and wick away water yeah i mean that's like ultimately like my gear list i wouldn't put too much thought into it past that so this is my um so this is my third ocr i'm gonna be serious for a second video if you find that this has been helpful uh let me know i'll definitely do more i do come off as a goofball but the things that i'm serious about i'm very serious and i have put in a lot of time I just feel like I'm a wealth of knowledge in this arena and I, I feel that my training is actually super effective, completely out of shape. So if you like this video, uh, let me know, subscribe. I would love to have you on the channel.